going to talk about prajna, which means transcendental wisdom or direct insight into the truth of life that can resolve all our problems and sufferings. We will use verses from Shrakama Sutra to discuss prajna. First, it says, you simply do not know that in the treasury of the dust come one, the nature of form is true emptiness. The nature of emptiness is true form. There are three kinds of prajna. One is literary prajna, two is contemplative prajna, three is real mark prajna, literary prajna, which is the sutra itself, the words, the language. Two, in order to reach prajna, you must contemplate on it. Three, you will reach the real mark prajna. Real mark is our goal. This Buddha nature, we call it the real mark, it actually has two parts. A has no mark, two is not without a mark. Everything has this mark. No mark means no form, no existence. Not without mark means all the wonderful existence of the world. The reason we are not enlightened because we simply do not know that in the treasury of the dust come one. Buddha is the dust come one. Our mind is the treasure. Our Buddha nature is within our mind. But we do not know. We have to look for this treasure. You gotta first have this prajna. So the prajna is basically these two lines. If you can understand these two lines, you will get the real mark. The nature of form is true emptiness. Everything you see in this world, all the appearances, all your life situations, they are truly empty. And the nature of emptiness is true form, which means the non-existence is its existence. We often say emptiness does not obstruct wonderful existence and wonderful existence does not obstruct emptiness. Emptiness is not really empty and form is not really existing. Because emptiness is not really empty, that's why it's called wonderful existence or forms. And form does not really exist, therefore it's called true emptiness. If you can understand that all forms are emptiness and all emptiness are form, then that's the prajna. For example, in Shrakama Sutra, Buddha says, our body and mind, all these forms are empty in nature. For example, your tongue tastes delicious food and it starts having sense of greed in the consciousness. How did this form come about? Buddha explains in detail. It's not from the tongue because the tongue cannot taste the tongue itself. It's not from the delicious food because it doesn't have connection with our own consciousness. And it's not from the empty space inside of our mouth because it will have all kinds of flavors. Therefore, our greed for this food doesn't really exist. Only if we understand emptiness, we will let go of our attachment to food, fame, fortune, everything that we conceive of as important and in our possession, we can really let go. If you don't have this prajna, you will never want to let it go because you see it as something great. So seeing the emptiness is very important. But not only do we see emptiness, we need to see that emptiness is in all the forms. So we can use the form, use this food to donate to people that are in need. So a bodhisattva always understand emptiness, so they let go of their afflictions and they always understand what is existing right now. We got to use it to be a bodhisattva and help this universe. Buddha keep repeating these two lines. The Heart Sutra says exactly the same thing. You let go of this form, all your five skandhas, form, feelings, perception, mental formation, your consciousness, none of it is real. It's not because of cause and conditions, because cause and condition never really rise or cease. 
They are all empty of self-nature. It's also not from spontaneity because it's not coming out of nowhere either. What is the source of all forms? The answer is just right here in these two lines. The nature of form is true emptiness. The nature of emptiness is true form. This is called prajna. So emptiness is no mark. Form is not without mark. If you can understand the similarity and difference between the two, transform your life based on this prajna, then you can solve all your sufferings. Right now, we cannot solve our afflictions and sufferings because we are so attached to the form. When we're poor, when we're sick, when we're depressed, we think it's so real. That's why we cannot see emptiness. We cannot see our true mind. If you really understand the nature of form is emptiness, you will not be caught up in it. Then you can be a true bodhisattva. So this is the essence of our mind. The next two lines explain the same thing. It's in a summary. Pure at its origin, it pervades the Dharma realm. Pure at its origin, it's A, which means no mark, emptiness. Everything is pure in its origin. Nothing is protection or extinction. Nothing is rising or ceasing. All you see in this world is things happening in a dream. You have to let go of all the attachment because it's originally pure. You don't have a self, you don't have an ego, you don't have attachment to these people, place and things because it's empty. On the other hand, it pervades the Dharma realm. It's not without mark. Every one of your thoughts will pervade the entire world. That's why we still need to cultivate. Just one sound of Omitofo or the mantra, it pervades the entire Dharma realm because our mind is so powerful. Although everything is empty, one thought can travel the entire universe. One sound of chanting will provide merits for all sentient beings. So we gotta bring out our body resolve. Do all that is good and change our afflictions. Be a true bodhisattva. These two lines are summarizing the first two lines. So pure, again, is emptiness. Pervades everywhere. Is use the form in this world to cultivate. You can be the best version of yourself. You will get rid of all your sufferings, all your attachment, all your problems of the world. This is the essence, it's empty and it's true form. It also has its functions. It accords with living beings' mind in response to its capacity to know. It is experienced to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma. Even though it's empty in nature, it still has its function. All your experience in life is because what's going on in your mind. Nothing happening outside is really happening outside of your mind. In other words, like begets like because the mind creates everything. If you're easily offended, you will likely to meet a lot of people that's going to offend you. If you're always jealous, you will see a lot of people in your life that will make you jealous and feel miserable. If you're always afraid of failure, you are likely to fail because it's all in accordance with your mind. That's why we gotta use our mind wisely. We gotta use it to appreciate life, to have compassion. Then you create the pure land. Where does the pure land come from? It's actually from your mind as well. It's in direct response to our capacity to know the capacity of our mind, how big your heart is. The bigger your heart, the better your life. But if your heart is always selfish, then you attract a life that is full of difficulties. If you are kind and compassionate, you will attract people who are compassionate and that's always helping you and loving you. So it's all in accordance to our mind. There are three people who watched a video clip about a mother bear climbing a snowy mountain with her cub. The mother 
quickly climbed up to the top of the mountain. The cub, because of his small size and inexperience, he was having trouble scaling the mountain. So every time he slip off, but he does not give up, he will go another route, hoping for a better grip. But every time he reached almost the top, he slips off again. He tried at least 10 times. Finally, the last time he made it up there. These three people, they have different point of view seeing this clip. The first person said, Oh, my life is miserable because I'm like the cup that had too many obstacles. It's because of the obstacles. It's not my problem. It's really the situation to blame. So he is always a miserable person having a terrible life. The second person, he said, Oh, you know, the cup always tried another route. He kept going and kept trying. Maybe I should try something else. If I don't have a job right now, I should try a different field. So the second person tried to resolve his life issues. The third person, he says, a little cub never give up because he wants to reach the top. Me as a cultivator, a bodhisattva, how can I give up? I should never give up on helping others, on being good, on having integrity, on changing my afflictions. So everybody's life is dependent on your capacity to know. No one is controlling your destiny. Your destiny is in your own hand. What kind of mind, what kind of mentality, what kind of attitude do you have about life? It's not blaming others. It's your own willpower, your belief, and having the prajna, knowing the emptiness of all things, and you can use the form to be the best that you can. Lastly, it is experience to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma. Karma never make any mistakes. You reap what you sow. Whatever is in your mind, your good thought, your bad thought, your wholesome thoughts, your unwholesome thoughts, make up your current life. Your situation, your body, you as a woman or a man, your job, your family, everything is in accordance with the law of karma. Nothing is a mistake. So understanding our true nature is to transform our life for the better. You know who you are. You know all the forms are empty. It's really up to me. Use the form to be the best that I can. If you really believe in karma, you will change your afflictions. What's most important is to change your temper. Anger is usually what brings us to the three lower realms. There is karma to your temper. People that are in hell is because of anger. Some people are angry on the outside. They show it. Others, they hold it in, but they don't show it outside. What I'm talking about is not having anger inside or outside. How do we get rid of this anger? By having prajna. All the situations are empty. Use this situation to get rid of my anger. I should not blame others for my misery. Reflect inward and see my own problem. If in your life everyone is against you, you should really go inside and confess. That's your karma. If you want to change the situation, it's not to change them, it's to change your heart. You have the heart of the Buddha. It's all up to you to use it, to change your life. So don't forsake what is near and run after what is far away. Grab for something outside, blame others, change others. We're only adding a head on top of a head. Just like you try to look for glasses. You're like, who stole my glasses? Who stole my glasses? But you're wearing already. So you already have the true nature within you. You just not looking in the right places. You're looking far away. You're not looking here. That's why Buddha is trying to tell us in all these Mahayana Buddhism, in the Heart Sutra, in the Shragama Sutra, because Buddha really wants you to get this prajna this real mark, which is our real self, to know the truth about life. So that's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.